If you're using Mid Journey, I've got some tips for you that'll make your art better and also make your life a lot easier, make things quicker and more convenient. So let's get right into it. So for this first tip, you're gonna to wanna to sign into your Mid Journey account by clicking sign in on the homepage. And what you wanna do is take advantage of the downloader. I've got two downloaders you can use here. If you actually log in, you can see your images here. If I just click these little plus symbols, I can now go open the downloader and download these three images. But what's really handy is if you're someone like me who makes a ton of images, you can go down to your archive on the left here. And if you can't see it, click the arrow, choose archive. And you can actually go over to the right and select entire days. I select this first day, scroll down, another day, select that day. And I can go through and select all this stuff and click open downloader. And you can see here, I've got these three images. I've got the 8th of September, I've got 99 images, the 30th of August, 247 images. I can click download all and it will zip them up and allow me to download them. So as, you, as it goes through and zips, it'll give you a prompt to download and you can go from there. The next, the next one is to reference styles. If you're logged into your account, you can actually go down here to, if I open this up, a styles section and there's other areas there. You can go and use this as reference for certain artists if you want to put them into your prompts and get sort of their style of uh, sort of artwork with what you're putting in. But you can also go to dictionary and there's other things in here that'll give you just phrases and things you can use in your prompts to get a certain result. There's also a GitHub page that I'll link to in the description below. It has a ton of resources you can use and uh, it's actually very, very good and very in depth and gives you like an endless amount of things to try on your mid journey images. And that's one of my other tips is to use artists names to get particular styles and looks to match what you're after. What you can also do is go to your community tab here, community feed and look for stuff that you like there. And you can also see what the prompt is by hovering. But the next tip is to use the copy command to get the exact command that they used. So if I want to get this particular picture here that looks like Megan Fox, I can go to this three dots here, right click, and hit copy command. It'll actually give me the full command I wanted from this image, including any sort of codes at the end or aspect ratios. Now, if you're looking to actually reference some of your older images, what you can do is go back to your archive here and find an image that you created a while ago that you might wanna recreate. So I've scrolled down and let's say I wanted to create another version of this image here, or even this image, I could click on it, bring it up, and if I want to, I can go straight to the Discord conversation by clicking on the three dots again and going open in Discord. And that will open a new tab and land me right on the original message from Discord. As you can see here, we've got the message here and I can go ahead and make variations. I can do an upscale. Uh, I can look at those options, click make variations and continue working on that, even though I created this image a long time ago, so the 26th. So that was a few weeks ago at the stage at the stage I'm making this video. Now the next one is to make sure you use as many words and phrases and be descriptive as possible in your prompts. Now while you can just give uh, Mid Journey something very brief and see what it comes up with, which is also fun, if you wanna really try and take control of what you're doing, you're gonna wanna add in more words. So if I type in slash imagine and I just type in monkey, this is the result we get, which might be fine, but maybe I don't like that style. Maybe I was looking for something with a little bit more realism. Maybe I wanted something uh, just a little bit more unique. So I need to get in there and make things as detailed as possible. So I say monkey, and maybe I say to myself, I want him to be green. I could say he has a hipster haircut. And I give it a bunch of descriptive words. I can even make it longer than this and a lot of the best prompts are quite long. But to give you an idea, I press okay on this. So now the results are a little bit more specific. And if I'm really happy with one of these, some of these aren't great, but you gotta keep on going. I'm gonna upscale number three. And that's my next tip is, you don't wanna stop at the one render. You wanna make sure that you are remixing and trying new phrases or even remastering. I like to hit remaster a bunch of times because it sort of goes down the rabbit hole a little bit and creates different stuff. But you can see here, we're rendering this uh, this monkey here and it actually looks pretty cool. He's wearing a green jacket and he's walking down the city. So we get a pretty specific result. The other thing is to make sure you learn certain phrases like hyperrealism or photorealism and look at that GitHub page and look for more descriptive, descriptive words. So now if I type in the same, so if I actually copy this here, I type in the same thing, but this time I say hyperrealism. It's gonna 
change the result again. So you see we've got completely different results again using hyper realism. So it's a bit of fun to play with that and uh, see what results you can get. But going back to this first one, this one looks not, not too bad, but I'm not quite happy with it. There's a little remaster button here. And that's part of the next tip. And that is I wanna click remaster because I wanna see what results I can get. But the real tip here is actually to go back to the mid journey bot here, the mid journey server, I should say, not to the bot. Um, and you want to go to announcements because under announcements is where they tell you different things you can try. So this, uh, if you scroll up and look through when they released their test mode, they, they sort of put in the information in there. But going in and checking the announcements every couple of days means that you get to stay up to date with what's going on. And you can see they've got tags and ways of interacting with the community so that you can be a part of that as well. But this is actually where I found out how to type in things such as dash dash test or dash dash creative to get completely different results using the, the new algorithm that they're working on. So checking out announcements is good. If you have any other troubles, don't forget to check out status and explore this area altogether because they actually put a lot of information here and also you can check out what other people are doing at the same time and it's, uh, it's just a really cool community to check out and get updates from. A couple of commands you might want to take to learn in mid journey to keep on top of things is to type slash info and that will give you information about your account, including how many renders you have made or how many you have left. So it'll actually bring up a bit of information. You can see I've used about half of my fast time and I've made lifetime 3,900 images. So get a bit of information that way. But the next one is actually very interesting. If I type slash settings, I can actually choose a bunch of settings to have on by default. So if I decide to change the mid-journey test or I want to up the stylization or the quality, I can go in here and make all of these changes. And if you click on private mode, they'll actually ask you to pay an extra $20 a month and that will make your images private. So that way they're not on the public server. But you can go through and test this stuff out and change it over. So you're not having to type in the commands every time you actually type in a prompt. So slash settings gives you those options to play with and then you can always type it in and switch back when you're ready. Now, while I'm here, there's another tip, which is actually very handy, is that is relax mode. If you're on an account, which uses the, uh, well, you've got the $30 a month plan at the time of making this video, you can use fast mode or relax mode. What happens is when you're on fast mode, by default, you are actually using up your metered usage. You have a certain amount of time you can use. What I like to do is type in slash relax, or you can just click relax mode on the screen here, but I like to type in slash relax to switch to relax mode. And I'll just simply punch a bunch of uh, prompts in there and I'll give it time. I'll do some, I'll type in four or five prompts and then I'll just walk off and do something. I'll come back, upscale some, walk away, come back again. And it's actually not that slow. It's fast is not that much faster in most instances, but in relax mode, you don't use any of your metered usage. You can just keep going and going and it's basically unlimited. So unless you're looking for particularly fast results, using relax mode by default is generally a pretty good idea. And when you're done, you can type in slash fast and you go back to fast mode. Now you notice I'm not, get, I'm not caught up with a bunch of other people's prompts here. I just get my own little area because I've got to pay, because I'm a paid customer, I can use direct messages so that's my next tip is to use direct messages. If we go back to the mid journey server, you'll notice that we've just got everyone's stuff in here. There's a bunch of things coming up and it's hard to keep track of your designs and uh, or your prompts, I should say, not your designs. So if I go into my direct messages and message the mid journey bot, I can get all the same results, but I'm not mixed up with the rest of the people out there in the chat rooms. I can just focus on what I'm making, which is pretty cool. And my next tip is about using aspect ratios. It's simple enough to do. All you need to do is type in your prompt. So I say, imagine a big alien. And I type dash dash AR, and then I go width by height. So if I make it one to one, it's gonna be square. If I make it one to two, it's gonna be thin and vertically tall. Or if I make it two to one, it's gonna be very wide and sort of thin. You see this image here was made using one to two. It's one unit wide by two units tall. But one thing I wanna talk about, which I have discussed in another video, is if I tab back to my mid journey account, these items here are made one to one. If I click on this one, you'll notice it's 1024 by 1024 pixels. Now this is for the current algorithm, not the test algorithm. The test algorithm seems to work differently. But if I create this one at one to one, I get 1024 by 1024 pixels. 
However, when I click on this taller image, which is 16 to nine, the resolution is actually taller. It's the same width, but it's taller. When you do certain aspect ratios, you will actually increase the size of your image. I believe you can go up to about 21 to nine or nine to 21, and you can actually max out the width while keeping that same 1024 height. But when you get beyond say 16 to nine, I think you actually can't do your max upscales. But if you're looking to create high resolution images, using those aspect ratios is pretty handy. There's a video I will pop in the description below or also at the end of this one, if you wanna check out a bit more of a detailed explanation on that. But wider, wider or tall aspect ratios generally create larger images, which is pretty cool. And so the next tip, if you look at the image on the screen right now, I've typed in daytime scene and I've got the scenery with buildings in it. So the next tip is to use negative words. So if I type in imagine, and put the same prompt in there, but this time I type dash dash no, and then buildings. It should actually try not to put buildings in the image. So we'll hit enter and see how that turns out. So now you can see it's created images of a daytime scene, but there's no buildings because I typed in dash dash no and put buildings. So you can use this to actually stop certain objects from appearing in the images that you're prompting. And uh, it's a pretty powerful method. Now the next tip is actually to learn how to upscale your images. Cause if you want to use these images, some of them are not very big. And there's a whole process around maxing out the resolution of your images. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop an image as a video on the screen right now, it goes in depth on how to upscale your images using things like Photoshop, Image Larger, uh, which is a pretty, pretty powerful process. And I recommend checking that out if you wanna learn how to upscale your images. Thanks for watching and see you next time.